God, just going to put you in, um, in remembrance of this thing, that the morning, the afternoon, uh, to the members in the house, just get your focus on, get your focus right. Let's make as less noise as possible. There are some mornings where agitation is in the atmosphere. That agitation is caused by unsettled minds. And so remember that you now have the mind of Christ Jesus and that you are already disciplined. And let's go forward in that mind frame. Welcome to Family Worship, Breaking the Chain School of Ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The title is Still No More Darkness. The mm -hmm. subtitle is The Way Light Does Things. The Way Light Does Things. We know that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. We know that light is not God. God is light. Mm -hmm. You can have a light mm -hmm. without having God, but when you have God, you have the true and living light. And so we're going to pick it up this morning in the book of John. In the book of John, not First John, the book of John. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you have a say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Excuse me. I was wrong. Go to first John. Right. Under the back books. First John. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Chapter one. First John chapter one. Hallelujah. Ready? Chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. We all know that Jesus is the word of life. We all know that the disciples walked with Jesus. They had the opportunity and the privilege to actually spend time with the living word of God. Verse 2, for the life was manifested and we have it and we, ha and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. So joy, having joy has something to do with knowing light. Having joy has something to do with knowing life. Having your joy full has something to do with knowing life. Having joy in its fullest capacity has something to do with knowing life. Therefore, knowing Jesus. Verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. No error in God. No wrong in God. You can't find fault with light. You, you can't say, Father, it's your fault. You can't say, I didn't understand because of you. You can't say, because you put the sun in the sky, we burn. You can't say, Father, we drown because you created water. You can't say, Lord, the birds, they flew over me and dropped their feces on me because you made them. 
there is no darkness in God who is light. You can't find a spot or a blemish that would make him a liar. It is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, impossible for God to lie to you. That's big. Light can't lie to you. He who is light can't lie to you. But he who can assume the form of light will lie to you. The Bible says Satan has the ability to transform himself into an angel of light. No matter who he's able to transform himself into, he's still a liar. The Bible says Satan is the liar and the father of lies. He lied from the beginning. So no matter who he appears to be to you, He's still a liar, and he can never be the light. He can never be God who is light, but he can appear to be a light. But a light is not who God is. God is the light. God is light. And to have your joy fulfilled, full, you've got to have a connection to the Most High God. Look at Job chapter 25. Job chapter 25. I'm slowing it down today and I'm going to let go as many scriptures uh, as I can. Hallelujah. Because we can talk about the word all day, every day, but if you don't see it with your eyes and hear it with your ears, you'll never be able to grow in it, walk in it, talk it, be it, live in it. Job chapter 25, we're picking it up. Let's just start from one, since it's basically just six uh, verses there. Then answered Bildad the Shuite and said, Dominion and fear are with him. He makes peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies? And upon whom does not his light arise? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can man, or how can man be clean that is born of a woman? Behold, even the moon, and it shines not, yea, which means yes, the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less? That is a worm and the son of man, which is a worm. Is God calling man a worm? No, he's not. But man was created from the same earth, same dust that a worm was created from. And it is also speaking of a lowly thing, an earthly thing. Look at verse 4 again. How can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? It's a question. And I'm, I'm presenting to you that there is no man, no woman alive, who can be justified in the eyes of God as being clean in his sight without knowing personally God who is light. Without knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you cannot be clean before the Father's eyes because Jesus is the way that the sinner becomes clean in the Father's eyes. And so those who don't believe on the Lord are still in darkness, spiritual darkness, where sin is active, where there is no repentance, where darkness is love more rather than light. How can a man be clean who is born of a woman? I'm telling you, in God's sight, a man and a woman can only be clean when they are born by the Spirit of God. We know a man in the Bible who asked Jesus, how can a man be reborn? Jesus said, 
confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that the Father sent him and raised him from the dead and that now he is seated in heavenly places on the right hand of the Father being the mediator and the advocate, an advocate for those who would believe. Believe that he shed his blood. Believe that the uh, stripes he took in his body. Believe that he was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities. Believe that the chastisement of your peace fell upon him. The punishment that was due the sinner fell upon Jesus. And by his wounds, you are whole. Not just healed, whole. Not just healed, whole. Verse 4. How then can a man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Listen to the Holy Spirit speak to some of you live. He's saying this is the way to change your life. When life speaks to you, when light approaches you, Darkness must flee. For the believer, he who is light has already approached, saved, and delivered. So for you, there is no more darkness that can ever hold you. But for the believer, for the unbeliever, excuse me, they're still under darkness, spiritual darkness. They can't see nor comprehend, or they can't see, therefore, they cannot comprehend what thus saith the Lord. To understand God who is light, you first have to be captured by him. There's no way you're going to understand who Jesus is until Jesus gives you the understanding. There is no way God who is light, there's no way you're going to understand him until light shines and causes the darkness in your life, in your mind, in your soul to flee. Mm -hmm. Let's read it again. How then can man be justified with God? Many people got this question. They wake up with it. They go to sleep with it. How can I get my life right with God? Well, until Jesus, who is light, is accepted into the heart and confessed with the mouth. There is no understanding how. Because there is no other way to be saved but by Jesus, who is the bridge of reconciliation. And so, how then can a man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? You cannot be clean who is born of a woman until you are reborn through salvation. And the captain of that salvation is Jesus himself. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the light that the Father sent into the world to light the way of every man. Light the way to every man. Why? Because man born of a woman under the birth of Adam and Eve was born into sin. Every man. Every woman. And Jesus is the only bridge, the only one who can show man by his Holy Spirit how to walk towards the Father in confidence and in trust. And if you are a believer this morning, you can approach the throne of God in confidence and in trust. It doesn't matter what it is. Your connection with the Lord has been cemented in blood. Jesus' blood, the blood shed for the remission of your sins. You are forgiven. And if you are forgiven, there's no more penalty. 
And because there's no more penalty, you can approach with confidence instead of fear and trembling. Somebody say, God loves me. God loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Hallelujah. Look at 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, we're going to be hearing that a lot, and we should. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 1, when you're ready, say amen. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 1, look at verse 6. We're going to pick it up at verse, pick it up at verse 5. This then is the message, right? This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared to you. They heard a message from the Lord. He came, light came to give a message of light to the world. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say in verse 6 that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Now, my question to you as a teacher, as a preacher, as a pastor is this. Don't be confused. Where are you? My, my assignment a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago was to tell the body of Christ who God is and who they are and tell the world and give the world a choice to live or to die. I'm asking you this morning, which are you? Are you darkness or are you light? I, 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 I spent time with God this morning and I believe, I, I saw, he showed me. Within the body of Christ, many, many are struggling because of emotions, because of the five senses. Let's just sum it up and make it short. They're more in tune to the five senses and to that which is tangible in the world. Nullifying their minds to the truth. That they are actually, as believers, in no more spiritual darkness. Do they walk in the darkness of the evening? Of course. Just like they walk in the brightness of the day. But in spiritual speaking, many are living in spiritual darkness and shun the brightness of Christ. Why? God reveals sins. Before he makes you better. Yeah. That's why I always say, if you think you're going to have a good time with God every day, don't be fooled. Sometime, he's going to give you a power power. Mm -hmm. A spiritual power power. Okay. Why? God chastises the ones he loves. Yeah. And any good parent will chastise their child yes. if they love them yeah. the correct way. No more darkness. Which are you? Are you, are, are you in the darkness of your sins? Or are you delivered? Why is this question important for you to answer? Because if you can answer it correctly, believe it, it will remove you from condemnation. It will help you deal with the attack of sickness and disease. It will help you walk upright when, when the feelings that your body and the world present to you say you are less than a worm and you are not a son. Mm -hmm. Look, 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 look at verse 6 again. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in the darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If you believe that you are still in the darkness as a believer, 
then the fruit that come out of your life is going to be darkness. How can you be a believer and be free and live in the light, who is Christ, and still live in the dark as a sinner? Which one are you? You got to know which one are you because there are storms of life, spiritual rainy days and life that come to say to you, you are not anything else but a worm. Something in bondage to the earthly elements. Designed to crawl and struggle everywhere. But when you know that God has delivered you from the darkness and that you abide in him and he abides in you, when you know that light abides in you, there should be something different about you from them who are still under darkness. It should be evident. It should be loud. You should see it. You should hear it. Others should feel it. It should be present. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, why did it say, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light? Because at this point, Jesus didn't come as God. He came as man. To show us that as man with God inside you, you can do anything and everything. God was like has designed you to do. Even in a natural body. He came to show us that with him, with greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world, with him in you, even in a natural body, you can operate in the supernatural and be victorious over the elements of this world and even Satan, who is bound to crawl on his belly. Which means to walk in this earthly realm. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The question was, how, in the book of Job, how can a man or woman be cleansed? And there's the answer. The latter part of verse 7. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So another question is presented to you. Say, are you covered in the blood of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that he became a living sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Worthy before the Father to be called the Lamb of God. If you believe in the Lord, you are no longer under spiritual darkness, so you don't have to act like you are and act out the lifestyle of one who is. And so, I don't know if you're listening. Maybe I'm too calm. Maybe I'm too smooth today. I don't know. But if you listen carefully, you'll hear a rainbow word for your life. Because in that truth that I just released is helps for many who are struggling with private sins, mm -hmm. secret sins, mm -hmm. private sins, secret sins, things you think God can't see. Mm -hmm. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of he who became the sacrificial lamb, cleanses every man and every woman and every child from all sin. When you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, this instantly takes place. If you have done it, how can you be darkness? 
if you're acting like darkness, it's because you're being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You don't know who you are. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is teaching and he's saying you are no more darkness, so you don't have to act like who you are not. Let's simplify. If you're not a rapist, you'll never act like one. So why act like a sinner if you are not one? If you're not a doctor, you'll never go and start operating on somebody in the hospital unless you done lost your marbles. So why act like a sinner when you are not one? And the blood of Jesus Christ, the latter part of verse 7, his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say in verse 8 that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Look at how light operates. Light requires the truth to be told before salvation can be released and received. Look, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The proof of the presence of light is the truth. Why? God is the truth. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So God is the truth and there is no lie in him at all. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Am I telling you to say you have no sin? I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is not confused. I'm telling you that he who is light is not the author of confusion. I'm telling you that he can't be double-minded. He can't be twisted. He can't be betwixt. He will not be bam bamboozled you. He will not send you one way when he wants you to go the other way. Light is not, God who is light is not a, a dimmer. You know what a dimmer is? A dimmer. You put it on your wall. You, you attach the electrical wires to it and it turns the light in your room from lighter to darker to darker to darker or from brighter to brighter. God is not like that. He had, you know the scripture says God, he, he doesn't have a variable of turning. You know what that means? That means God doesn't change. Light doesn't change from light to darkness and from darkness back to light. God is who he is, and that's always who he's going to be. And so he doesn't lie. He's never going to lie. He cannot because he is not. He can't even want to. Good Lord, hallelujah. <coughs> God can't even want to lie to you. Because to say that God could even want to lie to you would say that there's a possibility that he could lie to you. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is the truth and not the lie. He cannot because there is no probability of him becoming lesser than who he is. God is never lesser. He always is. God will never be lesser. He always is. Is who? God. But in the mind of man, we make God bigger, we make him smaller, we make him bigger on a day we happy and make him smaller on a day it's raining. We cannot decide how God is God. God is God. It's to be accepted. And believed. There is no variable of turning in the word of God. It is not wrong on Monday and right on Tuesday. Or righter on Thursday and, and a little less of being right 
on a Friday. He, he can't dim himself or brighten himself. He is the full consummation of life. Jesus is the light that came into the world to light the path of every man. And if you've been lit on fire, there is no more darkness that you live under. To be in a dispensation of grace and to operate under, in, and under, not even under, in the dispensation of grace means that there's no more darkness that can hold you bound. It's too late. You've been forgiven already. There's no punishment that you can look for, actually. So why walk as a condemned man? Why act like a sinner? Why do the things that prove sin is still your master? Why say the things that reveal to others that sin is your master when you say Jesus is your Lord? Why go to the places when there's no variable of turning, no, no shadow of turning in God? He's not mixed. God is not light that is mixed with darkness. God is light who creates the darkness. Who shrouds himself in the darkness of the cloud that walks within my day and walks within my night. For he is not darkness. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to God is faithful and just. God is faithful and just that when you say, Father, forgive me of my sins, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He is faithful and just to forgive you then, never needing to forgive you again. This is who you are. This is who we are wants to be forgiven and never needed to be forgiven again. I didn't say you wouldn't have to go to God and say, Father, thank you for forgiving me. Because I said something today, I did something today, I said I thought something. I didn't say you wouldn't have to do that. I said, God, once he has forgiven you, you he, he will never need to forgive you again. Why? The blood only needed to be shed once and once and for all. You are the sons who were birthed out of the once and for all. You are the daughters who were reborn from the once and for all God. Never needing to be, uh, never needing to revisit your sins again. Never needing to go under the darkness again. What can Satan do, really? But play on your ignorance. So if you fill the ignorant box with knowledge of what can he really do but lose? <clears throat> what would happen to you if you took the truth that I just spoke and meditated on it? What can he really do? So what he'll do is he'll, he'll put fear in that place of meditation so that you won't even assume to think about it. God, I can be like God. I can walk like God. Not, not that you can be. You are already. It's a big challenge for me to say what God said. How can a father create a son and the son be a woman? How can the father create a woman and the woman be a man? 
Why are you think in the body of Christ we are not man nor woman? We are the sons of God. We are the sons of God. Because when God calls us sons, he's not talking about male or female gender. He's talking about a place. A government, a kingdom, a rank, a righteousness, an authority. Look at Look at 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, hallelujah, hallelujah, 1 Corinthians <coughs> Chapter 4, verse 5. You ready? Amen. Amen. Let's pick it up at verse 3. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, whom both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Only God, who is light, can bring to sight, to understand the things that cannot be understood because they are in darkness. Even you, whatever it is about you that you want to know about you, know why I can't walk this way, why I don't walk this way, why I talk this way, why I look this way. One day I, I asked God, I said, Lord, why you gave me this voice? Because this voice shakes rooms, man. Sometimes I don't even want to talk in public. God said, I gave you that voice when they ask you, when they say you sound like Barry White, you tell them, no, I don't. You tell them God gave me this voice and he put a sound in this voice and to when I raise this voice, the sound of God comes through like the sound that comes to a horn. Tell them it was designed in bass. Tell them there's no need to be afraid. Just listen. God can show you anything you need to know. He can tell you the truth about anything you need to know. And he's saying there is no more darkness that you live under, believer. Except for the darkness you still believe in. That's why you got to know the truth. You know what the scriptures say about knowing the truth. What does it do? Knowing the truth does what? Come on. Set knowing, you free. Knowing the truth does what? Set you free. Verse. Let's look at verse. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart and then shall every man have praise of God. You, you, let me tell you the day when people are going to say, God, you are God. It's when God reveals everything they've ever thought and ever done 
and their heart. We're, we're under a great cloud of mercy. That God just don't start walking past wives going, your husband is cheating right now. He's cheating right now. He's cheating right now. And when she go, where is he, Lord? He go, oh, he's in the bathroom. He's by himself. Mm -hmm. But in his heart, he's cheating. Right now. Mm -hmm. What would happen if God just started revealing to every husband, your wife is cheating on you right now. But where's my wife? She's in the laundry room. She's thinking about the man two, two machines down. Mm -hmm. What would happen? You would bow and give God praise, understanding that your sins and all of your life are before him and nothing is hidden. And that everything about you can be revealed and even is revealed now in the presence of the Lord. Where can you go and where can you hide from God who is light? Not light in the room, not the light in the sky. We're talking about supernatural divine light. And even at the releasing of that truth, some you cannot understand without the presence of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, open up ears to hear yes. what you say. I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know these things if the Holy Ghost wasn't present. They wouldn't even be a question. The Holy Spirit is the inspiration to the question that is presented to God. Without the Holy Spirit being the inspiration to the question that is presented to God, you wouldn't even ask God, where are you? You just will worship yourself. And so many are worshiping themselves right now, today. Choosing where they want to go, what they want to do, what they want to say, what they want to eat, what they want to wear. Never asking God anything. Never asking his permission or reading their word to see what God has given us permission to do. Well, I tell you this, we know that we've been given permission to be free of darkness. We don't got to act like we live in it at all. We can be that weird and strange and be clean in the eyes of God because of the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. Never needing to revisit our sins again because God is the once and for all. Look at verse 6. Did you understand verse 5? Because sometimes we move to that. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels with the S of the heart. There are many counsels of the heart that people don't see. Have many group meetings with you, self and Satan, inside the body. There are many uh, office meetings where you decide whether you're going to go this way or go that way. Whether you're going to live this way or live that way. People decide on Monday, Friday I'm going to get paid, and I'm going in the club, and I'm going to dance, and I'm going to have sex with Susie, and I'm going to drink Henny, and I'm going to do, and I'm going to do, and I'm going to do, all the time. People have counsel in their own heart, mm -hmm. and they say to themselves, I know God is real, but I'm not serving you. Some people talk directly to God and say, I know you are light, and I like the darkness rather than light, so guess what? At the end of my days, do whatever you're going to do, because mm -hmm. I'm going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. Foolish man. Mm -hmm. God is the creator. Mm -hmm. Who, too? It's no darkness at all. God can step in hell and all hell freeze. Jesus. He can sit on his throne and see everyone in hell and have the fortitude.
multitude of love not to bring them out because his righteous judgment is once and for all. It never was decided in ever. There is no perfection needed to it because it is the thing that perfection has decided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus. How can you be in the dark? God say, you are no longer the doctor. God said, let there be water, water is. Let there be light, light is. Create a firmament, firmament is. Create fish and fowl, fish and fowl is. Not fish and fowl will be, fish and fowl is. God said, have the faith of God, faith is. God said you are whole. Healing is now. What is God saying to you? What is God saying to you? Light is like fishing pole. Very different fishing pole. Held by the hand of the only true and living God. And when it is cast, then it shines. When it is cast out into the deep of the darkness, whatever it snatches, whatever it hooks, Whatever it snatches, whatever it hooks into, will be reeled in. Say God. God. Say God. God. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me out of the darkness. For bringing me out of the darkness. And into your marvelous light. Into the marvelous light. You see, sometimes we go through because we're not sure on how to be in any given day, and the reason is. We haven't fully decided to agree with God on who we are. Therefore, we can't see how we actually can walk and live every day. Yes. If you think something is wrong, you can possibly act like something is wrong. If you don't know the light, how can you walk in the light? How can you walk as the light? How can you produce the fruit that is only produced from the source who is like God? Making all kind of choices in a month that make you more tired mm -hmm. than in a check. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Scared to sit, scared to be still and stay awake in the presence of the Lord. That enemy crafty. Because if he can know you to sleep, he can possibly stop your new beginning. And keep you remembering the former thing. Never experiencing your newness that God gave you when he spoke to you. And called you something. Causing much suffering and much torment because of a lack of understanding. No patience to sit inside the school of the Holy Ghost. You would rather watch Martin. You would rather watch the Valley Girls. You would rather watch the lifestyle of he and she. <laughs> you know how they say in training. He, she. Who that she? She told me. God wouldn't let me let me play with that right now because I was going to play with it. He wouldn't let me play with it. He stopped me. There's information, life changing, Sister Nancy, life changing information, Sister Naomi, in the school of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He is the law of beginnings. Mm -hmm. For those who need a beginning, 
Come on now. I know right now in this room, God just showed me something. Right now in this room, everyone here needs a new beginning in something. Yes. For me, it's real personal. It's real personal. I am seeking God for something only God can do without me taking the credit. I can go and do it. I'm going to work real hard. I'm going to break my neck. I'm going to sweat blood. And at the end of the day, all I'm going to have for it is, I did it. But if God tell me to do it, and I do it, I don't have to walk under the weight of stealing praise. Because I didn't do it. His word came. It made the instrument. Did you catch that? Yes. Ah, I'm going to drop this. Mm -hmm. The word of God is like a seed. Mm -hmm. And when it is sown, it has within it the ability to do what seeds do. Mm -hmm. The word of God is a seed. When it is sown, you can go about your business every day to swap by faith. And the seed will do what it was meant to do when you're sleeping and when you're awake. And then the blade. Mm. Then the corn starts to grow in the ear. Mm. And then you can snatch the harvest quickly. Mm. Why? It's your harvest. Mm. But without a word, there's not even a blade. Because if the word is the seed, and it is, and you don't have it, you have nothing to sow. Mm -hmm. And so that's why sometimes we go through Monday to Sunday, and we're not speaking nothing. Mm -hmm. But what is birthed from the uh, unrenewed body, from the deadness of the carnal mind, we speak. But if we would learn, be still. But if we would learn to speak according to the mouth of he who is light, we will speak light. And when light is sown, what comes back? A harvest of light. I'm being challenged in private like never before. If God tells you, and I pray that he tell each and every one of you today listening, listening with the intent to do what thus said the Lord, I pray that he speak inside your inner ear and tell you to create your world with his words in your heart. What does that look like? The only way you can see it is if you look at God. If you find out who God is mm -hmm. and what he says and who he says you are. Thank you, Jesus. I know there's scriptures where I can show you there's no more darkness. You are no longer darkness. You were sometimes dark. I don't want to show you those right now. I want to build something up in you. Go find out who you are. Say it in Google. I teach people all the time. They ask me questions, Sister L, and I'll be like, where's your phone? Mm -hmm. And then they give me their phone, and I tap the mic on Google, and I say, where in the Bible does it say we are no longer darkness? And then they come up, and they go, oh. Oh. Do you know you can be doing that all day, believer, every time you need to do it? And then all you got to do is go in your Bible later and find out that and make sure what came up in Google is the truth. Because mm -hmm. Google might lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you believe in Google and they lie or add or take some away and you believe it, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You always got to verify. Yes. Confirm. Yes. In the mouth of two or three witnesses. 
in two with two or three scriptures. Yes. Confirm, Amen. verify, concrete, make still, make known, Amen. believe in, you know, you know, you know. Yes. Let's look at something and then I'm I'm very comfortable and peaceful that we can actually walk away from this Bible class in confidence and wait for the next one. God said to me, keep going. No more darkness. Keep going. 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 Somebody in the body of Christ needs to know they're operating under the misleading lie that something is wrong with them. Nothing. If you are the head and not the tail, if you are above and not beneath, because Jesus in heaven is who he is, you are, as he is in heaven, who you are in him right now in the earth. But if you can't walk according to that, which equals live according to that, then you're under a delusion, under a lie, under a darkness, under a misrepresenting spirit. A spirit who represents the darkness, but looks like the light to you. Misleading devil who can disguise himself as a thought in your mind and even sound to you like you sound to you. Tell you you're crazy. Tell you you're losing your mind. Cross across you and then tell you you ain't see that. You're seeing things. Lying devils. Devils who want to keep you in a lack of understanding. Why? So you can never come into the full potential of now I have the mind of Christ Jesus. Find a problem in the mind of Christ Jesus and God is not real. So look at how the devil is trying to get you to find a problem with God. Because from the day you find a problem in God, you are not going to serve him again. You're not going to believe again. Why do you think Satan fights so hard to keep people believing that idols made with porcelain and wood and iron and steel? Leading people to walk around with some fake image of Jesus on a cross. Lead people to count. Uh, 52 beads and count 92 beads and pray. Lead people to light incense, believing that without lighting them incense, God don't hear their prayers. Got people who call themselves bishops and archbishops walking through the sanctuary with incense, who still believe that the incense, that smoke, has the power to ward off demons. Don't nothing have the power to keep a demon off of you except for the word of your testimony Amen. and the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So no wonder he's still turning your head around. Mm -hmm. No wonder you're still throwing holy water all around the room. But the sons of God under the New Testament, we speak that which is light. And get the same result that he who is light gets because we are the sons of light. You can't tell God you are not light if God calls you light. Who are you to tell God he's wrong and he's in peace? <clears throat> Say, I am, I am. I am, I am. I am. Now, when you take that, how deep you take that into battle, how deep you take that, you take that sword of the spirit, and you go up in the battlefield of your mind, and you swing with confidence, and you swing with faith, and you bring into subjection things that are not of God, and make them captive to the mind of Christ Jesus. You need the word. You need the word. You need the word. No time spent in God's word means there's a there's an area on the battlefield of your mind being occupied by an enemy without your against them. 
in this sin, in this warfare, you have to encounter the adversary in your own head. You say, you say this thing, but what did God say? You say this, Satan says this, God says this. Which one are you going to choose? Because that choice determines which armor you wear. The armor of light or the armor of darkness. Satan carries armor. Whose armor to God is for naught, which means it is nothing. I'm still going high. I'm looking for my way out. Give me a second. Give me a second. It's just the Holy Ghost saying things to people. I don't know who that is. Give me a second. You got to go in your mind with the sword of the spirit and secure territory or the devil will take it. They'll take it. I want to say something so strongly, but people will judge me. They'll, 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 they'll throw stones. So I'll hold it. Let me tell you something. The warfare you refuse to do on the battlefield of your mind will be the warfare you lose, even though God said you are a victim. Wow, as long as we live in this unrenewed body, it's going to be the warfare of the mind every day. Every day. And like I said last week, when you feel yourself getting a little tired, a little weary, yo, call your brethren and wait for them to call you because they might not even be thinking about you. They might be eating that sugar, sugar shot. Sometimes I'll pick my brethren send me pictures from, from, from Cracker Bag. Why did I say that? Because they may not be having a problem at the time you're having a problem. <laughs> you got to make them aware. <laughs> Today I'm driving on two toes, brother. Lay gone. Got two toes left. And I hear God saying, why you didn't call them in the beginning? You called the action was they hungry. Why you didn't call them in the beginning and say, can we pray? Because you, you, you want to be strong by yourself. Mm. You cannot walk alone. God is with it. Who are you doing it? God is. You know when God talks to us, something is mm. coming that we're going to need this word. He said you cannot walk alone. Mm. You, know, you might have to hear LCF 4 in the morning. Boop, 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 boop. And she may be tight. Because he even just went to sleep. <laughs> That, so what? So what? We cried in the beginning in immaturity. We can get together and not cry in maturity. We can pray. We can walk the fruit for each other, with each other. For these hard-headed, lost, unsaved family members who think they know what they're doing, who think they know how to tell God who they are, who he is, how they're going to live. Mm -hmm. For these unsettled neighbors mm -hmm. oh, yeah. with Buddhas in their yards. Yes. For these devil worshiping governments. Pray. Into that prayer closet and pray. Use the word, the sword of the spirit, and enter into prayer. Not, Lord, can you give me a car? No, but Father, you said, greater is he that is in past our men than he that is in the world. He cannot fail. Lord, he is the head and not the tail. He is above and not beneath. Can you spend one hour in prayer? Can you war with me? Or are you sleeping? But when it's time to go to great adventures, oh, Time to drink that shot. Oh, mm -hmm. how about when it's time to pray? Yes. 
You see, sometimes we make God this big religious God of religiosity. And he's so simple in his instructions. Study to show thyself approved mm -hmm. in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. A workman need not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's all we're doing right now. Amen. We ain't judging nobody. Yes. We ain't knocking nobody. Mm -hmm. But one thing we are doing is calling the entire world into the bosom of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Strengthen up. Strengthen up. Put your energy back. Something took your energy away, put it back. Don't wait. Put it back. At least you be still tired Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. For you are truly the most high God, worthy of the most highest praise. Glory be to your name. We thank you, Lord, for Raymond. We thank you for your word that causes new beginnings and causes some things to be formed. We thank you, Father, that you are our God. We thank you that you are our leader. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Prove your word today in the lives of many. Cause them to follow. And as they follow, reveal to them that they are your sons. We thank you. Thank you for placing you a high place where the enemy can't reach us. We thank you, Father. We thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that right now in the body of Christ, there are healings taking place because we are whole, because of the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that right now in the body of Christ, word of wisdom is being dropped into the spirit, into the ears of believers right now, word of knowledge, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have stretched out your arm this day into the lives of those who are in the darkness and given them a choice to choose life or death. We pray that you inspire them with all that you are, all of your word, and all of the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and all of the reason why Jesus died for them, and bring them out of the darkness and into your marvelous light. We give you praise today, we give you honor, and we give you glory all day in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God.